In June, amid the golden fields, I saw her groundhog lying dead. Dead like he, my senses shook and mind outshot her naked frailty. There, lowly in our vigorous summer, his form began to scentless change, and made my senses wait for dim. Seeing nature ferocious in him, inspecting close his maggot's might, and seething cauldron of his being, half with loathing, half with a strange love, I poked him with an angry stick. The fever arose, became, oh my gosh, became a, a flame. In vigor circumscribed the skies, immense, in, immense energy in the sun, and through my frame a sunless trembling. My stick had gone. My stick had done nor good nor harm. Then I stood in the silent in the day, watching the objects as before, and kept my reverence for knowledge, trying control to be still, to quell the passion of the blood, until I had bent down on my knees, praying for joy. In the sight of decay, and so I left, and I returned in autumn, strict of eye to see the sap gone out of the groundhog, but the bony, sodden hulk remained. But the year had lost its meaning. In intellectual chains, I lost both love and loathing, mirrored up in the wall of wisdom. Another summer took the fields again, massive and burning, full of life. But when I changed upon the spot, there was only a little hair left in bones bleaching in the sunlight, beautiful as architecture. I watched them out, I watched them like a geometer, and cut a walking stick from a birch. It has been three years now, there's no sign of the groundhog. I stood there in the whirling summer, my hand capped a withered heart, and, the th and thought of China and of Greece, of Alexander in his tent, of Matag Mactain in his tower, of St. Teresa in her wild lament. Here's my Vendler analysis for um, the groundhog. Um, for number one, oh my gosh, it's basically a someone just walking and they see a dead groundhog. They talk about the dead groundhog and the way it makes them feel. Yeah. Number two, um, what happens before the poem begins? Where, well, there's a dead, there's a, or a groundhog dies somehow, and the author is walking and he sees this, um, this groundhog, and that has made, that, that made the, the speaker talk about the dead groundhog. Um, there's any of the parts. I split it into three parts, so I'll just draw where I split it. So, where? Okay, here. Here. Um, cut a walking stick. In here, so I split into three parts. So the first time he sees the, the groundhog, a uh, year no, the, the first the first time in June, summer no the first time in June, the second time in autumn, and then three years. So the climax I would say happens right here. It happens right here, where he sees. The, the groundhog and he's 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 moved by it almost in a loathing and uh, loving way and then the rest of the poem follows kind of like a, a downward slope kind of and then at the end it's like boop. Uh, I'll get back to that on number six um, so number five maybe divide the poem into these parts um it's split into different well i i based it out of um time periods so the first june and then a couple months and then three years um yeah and his emotions that come every time he revisits the the corpse of the groundhog 
So what is the emotional curve um, that the whole poem is strung on? I drew it perfectly. It sharply reaches the climax, and then it slowly um, goes down this slope. And then the very end, we kind of get a little, little blip, um, which would be like the, the final meaning, I guess, of it. All right, the final, his final takeaway from this, this dead groundhog that's been laying in a field for three years. Um, what else? How's this emotional curve made new? Um, I just said, climax is here. It sharply goes up, it goes like, it hits the climax here, and then goes down like that. For the context of diction for eight, actually, I have that. He used a lot of interesting words, like when he's um, describing the groundhog, he uses the word cauldron for some reason. Um, already talked about the loathing and love. He describes the stick as angry, an angry stick. It's kind of confused me. I was like, what, what the heck does that mean? And then he says the fever that he feels arose and becomes a flame. And you, you can't, this can't become this, you know, but it, it can in, in poetry. So, and he uses an, another interesting word like quell, um, in sodden, the bony sodden hulk remained. It's just interesting words. And we see um, a love and loathing again. First in here, in line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11, and then we see it again in the second part of the poem. <clears throat> so yeah. The tone, yes. Can I, can I name the tone? Tony, can you speak about it? Okay, so... The tone almost exactly follows the um, the skeleton curve, so you um, yeah, his tone kind of goes up as he spots this dead groundhog, and as it time passes, it goes down like his tone kind of diminishes he kind of loses loses interest in this groundhog until he sees it for the last second for the last time uh who's the main agent in this poem the main agent would be the the speaker or the author um and how does he change throughout the poem he feels moved by this um groundhog at the beginning and then during his his movingness kind of diminishes, like I said. Can I imagine the poem if it was written by another person? Yes. Well, I feel like another any any ordinary person would just see a dead groundhog and be disgusted and immediately just keep moving and never like think about it again. Um Yeah. Genres. Um I don't really understand this one, but yeah, and what has it invented that is new, striking, memorable, and content genre and analogies and rhythm speaker? Um, I kind of thought he was like, oops, he was, he loved talking about, um, kind of like appreciates nature in a way, and. The way things decay and how there's a natural cycle of things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah, appreciation of nature almost. 